Hello, in this video I'm going to discuss the philosophical views of British mathematician and physicist turned philosopher Roger Penrose. As usual I go into this in more detail in my forthcoming book provisionally titled Stuff and Consciousness. Penrose is of the view that human brains cannot ever be simulated by digital computers. He discusses this in his two books The Emperor's New Mind from 1989 and Shadows of the Mind from 1994. The main thrust of his argument is based on Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem. I won't go into the mathematics, Penrose himself does that, but the theorem states that for any formal algorithmic system that can generate mathematical proofs, there will exist true statements that cannot be proved within the system. Such statements are known as Gödel sentences. Penrose attempts to use this as a proof that human thought is not algorithmic. Any digital computer would have its own girdle sentences that are true, but that it would not be able to prove. See Shadows of the Mind, pages 72 to 76. We humans, however, would be able to see that the statements are true using our insight and are therefore not like digital computers, according to Penrose. Penrose's reasoning is very mathematical and sometimes quite obscure, but I do not think I need to go into the precise detail of it here for you to understand the gist of it. I would only be repeating what Penrose has said anyway, so if you want to find out more it's probably best to get it straight from the horse's mouth. It is a very strong claim that Penrose is making. Consider a computer programmed with the laws of physics and the positions, momentums, etc. of all the particles in our universe. This computer would not be able to exist in our universe as it would be as complex as the universe and would have to contain a representation of itself within itself and would lead to an infinite regress. But we can imagine it existing as a in a larger and more complex universe as a hypothetical possibility. But if what Penrose is saying is true, then this would not even be a hypothetical possibility, because representing the whole universe would have to include representing human thought processes as part of the universe, on a digital computer, which is what Penrose is arguing against. And indeed, Penrose does claim that the laws of physics cannot be re represented computationally, he also understands that there will, be, there will need to be new physical discoveries to support his claims. These discoveries, he thinks, lie in the realm of quantum mechanics. He sees it as an inevitable consequence of his Gerdelian argument. He is indeed making an incredibly strong claim. So let's assume for the sake of argument that human thought can be represented on digital computers. What sort of computational system might be able to represent human thought? or well, certainly not one contained in the mind of one human. After all, Penrose states that it would be within our algorithm to refer to, quote, the reasoning and insights of mathematicians or the mathematical community, end quote, from page 97 in Shadows of the Mind. We have available to us more than the thoughts in our head to find mathematical truths. It goes much further than this. We use various resources, including paper to work on calculators and computers. We can consult each other and we can delve deeper and deeper into the world and the universe to find resources to help us prove mathematical theorems. So the algorithm in question would involve the workings of some of the universe, which we are assuming for the time being to be computable for the sake of argument. If our thinking is algorithmic in this way, then there would be a girdle sentence that is true but that we cannot know is true. Penrose argues that no such girdle sentence could stump us in this way, showing that our thinking is not algorithmic. Because according to Penrose, when we come across this girdle sentence, we would be able to use our insight to show that it is true. But Penrose's argument does not succeed unless we can actually find the algorithmic procedure involved, which we need in order to find the girdle sentence itself. If you find mathematical truths using some algorithmic procedure, it would be no contradiction for you to follow through Penrose's reasoning and say that there must be a specific true statement that is unknowable to you because of your algorithmic procedure. The contradiction would only occur if you could show what this sentence is and therefore see that it is true. Unless Penrose shows that this can happen under the assumption that our mathematical reasoning is algorithmic, his argument fails. This is quite clear because it would be easy to program a digital computer to draw the conclusion that it has a girdle sentence and that this girdle sentence must be true without stating what the sentence actually is and we would not see that as a contradiction. When we look at what is involved in our own algorithmic procedure we can quite clearly see that there is no way that we could possibly understand it even if we did exclude some or even most parts of the universe as inaccessible. Understanding the algorithm would require a system capable of containing it, but this is not available to us. 
we would not have more resources for finding our mathematical algorithm than we would for find within the algorithm itself, but we would need to to be able to contain it. All the resources we have can also be used as part of, of our mathematical algorithm, so there's nothing else left for us to use. And without understanding the algorithm, we have no chance of finding its girdle sentence, which would be incredibly complex. It would be impossible to do so, rather than merely very hard. So Penrose's argument is no threat to the idea that our thought is algorithmic, as we would, need to under we would need to be able to examine and understand the whole of the universe that is involved in our algorithmic procedure for it to work, something which cannot be done. Just as with computers, there would be true statements that humans cannot prove to be so, but, it would not, but we would not be able to find out what these statements were, so we would not e ever be in a position to be able to prove the unprovable. We need not let Gödel's theorem bother us when postulating that human thought can be represented on a digital computer.